Hi, my name is Clay. My name is Jackson. And my name is Hudson. And welcome to the Tree Talk Podcast, where we will talk about the importance of planting trees and some of the best ways to help the environment. Our first interview we did was with Ren Andres, a local landscaper here in Phoenix. Jackson, you're up. Um, yeah, what inspired you to work on this, like in your field? Like what inspired me to become a landscape designer? Yes. Hmm. I mean, a lot of things. I kind of took a bit of a winding path to where I'm at now. Um, I majored in sustainability when I went to college. And um, I was first introduced to the discipline of landscape architecture then. I took uh, an elective class that was about landscape architecture. So that was the first time I kind of became aware of it. And then um, when I graduated, I, you know, I worked in film as, as you probably know, Clay, I worked with your dad for a little bit and um, was really interested in the subject matter of the films that we were working on, which was a little bit related to, to landscapes, but um, hang on. My cat is like pawing out my door. I'm going to let him in real quick. All right. Sorry. All good. Um, yeah, I kind of eventually came to landscape architecture as um, a really good intersection of what I'm really interested in and what I'm also kind of proficient at. You know, I really have always had an interest in art and design and um, I've always had a great affinity for nature, which only deepened when I got my bachelor's and when I was working in film. And so, um, I was just kind of like riding my bike home one day and I was like, what about this landscape architecture that I've kind of heard about a few times here and there? And I just kind of started doing research on it and then the, the rest is history. That's cool. That's cool. Um, you got it. I think Jackson, isn't this your question? Uh, um, do you know how many trees are in, planted in Phoenix so far? How many trees? I have no idea. I would love to know that number, though. I would imagine yeah. in the thousands, probably not quite a million, but. Um, and do you. I, I, actually, just moving on from that one. Um, what trees here in Phoenix like work well and how do you deal with the water issues in the desert? So the ones that work the best here um, would be obviously desert adapted trees. So in our work that we do, the trees that we specify the most are definitely uh, native mesquite trees and also Palo Verde trees. Those are probably our two most Mm. popular trees. And I mean, that's kind of the beautiful thing about Phoenix is there's such a diversity of trees that can thrive here. Um, But if we're gonna be responsible about water, we're gonna wanna use desert adapted trees like those two species I mentioned. there's also a tree called the desert willow. Um, there's also, there's a few different types of Palo Verdes too. And there's the Palo Brea. Um, what else? I mean, there's, there's so many uh, different kinds of trees that are low water use for sure. Well, and they vary in size too. There's some bigger canopy ones like uh, native mesquites. They can get, you know, if, if you give them enough water they'll get really, really big, you know, 30, 40 feet wide and, and tall and um can shade an entire property um but those ones will also stay small too if they don't get like a ton of water i mean i could i could go on about the different species for a long time so if you have any other questions about any specific trees or if you want me to keep going just let me know all right yeah let's, uh, well, hold on, hold on you hold know on. how all right um and how, oh, how do you like specifically deal with the water issues in the desert um so um, definitely through our selection of plants um making making r- really responsible choices and also placement of plants really matters too when it comes to both water and other um, concerns when we pick out what tree we want to plant um but the way we deal with water well we all like water water and where it goes is definitely like our number one driver for how we design a landscape right so we're always looking about looking at where the rainwater goes whenever there's a storm and so we design 
We try to get bioswales included into our designs as often as possible and do a lot of rainwater harvesting techniques. And uh, yeah, sculpting the land to use water in the most effective way and then making really responsible plant choices are probably our two biggest ways that we are responsible with water in the desert. All right, uh, Jackson. You know how people can help plant trees? How people can help plant trees. Um, I think it all kind of starts with a wider appreciation for trees and the benefits that they provide. I think that there's a lot to be done in terms of increasing the tree canopy here because not a lot of people really place value on trees and like what they can do for a landscape. And they kind of see them as like this uh, sink of water that just takes up their water and raises their water bill, right? Um, I mean, it's all about the property owner, at least in our field and like what they do with the trees and how they take care of them. Um, so, I mean, we're just, we're just the designers. We're at one part of the process in, when it comes to developing or redeveloping a, a piece of land. And then after that, it's, it's on the owners to keep the trees and maintain the trees and make sure that they stay alive and well. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of misconception about the proper way to take care of a tree, which I can get into, uh, but that's not your question. Um, I mean, it's really, I mean, so there are some like city minimums and certain types of projects, you know, there are sometimes minimums about amounts of trees you have to plant when you have a project. Um, and then I think in terms of landscape architect with a client, like educating them, educating the owner on the intrinsic value that, that trees bring to their landscape, if they don't already see that. And, um, encouraging them to, to, to buy off on us planting more trees. That's kind of how we as landscape architects would try to plant more trees. I mean, cause we can, I, we always propose so many in our projects and then with time, those, a lot of um, the trees can kind of get cut out or uh, there's this term called value engineering where um, to save costs, we have to remove different parts of a design and trees almost always get cut out or reduced anyways. So yeah, I think the short version of that really long answer is to uh, get to educate people on the, the value that trees bring and build a greater appreciation for trees among property owners in Phoenix. Yeah, thanks for, yeah, no, totally. I'm also gonna have to get off the call, call now Actually, that's all the questions we have for now. So we're good. Okay. Do you have these questions written down slash can you send those to me so I can think about it a little bit more? Yeah. And um, I can get a lit. We have a couple more that we're going to do in the podcast too. Um, okay. I can send that to you if, if you want. Yeah, that would be great. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. For I'll, your time. I'll email, yeah. I'll email those to you. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Um, do you guys have any other questions for me or um, what? Oh, um, okay. How else can I prepare for the podcast interview slash how long is it going to be? How long? Pro okay. So yeah, definitely just read over the questions for preparation and how long it's going to be. I think what we're going to do is. Well, I don't know. These interviews are both like 12 to 15 minutes long. So it's probably going to be like 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. I, don't, I don't think it'll be 40. I think it'll probably be more like 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah. So we can uh, talk about a time that works sometimes next week. We have to do it by January 31st. So we got a good amount of time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll email the questions to you for so you can some preparation and uh thank you for meeting up with us today yeah of course Thanks. yeah if you have any other questions just let me know we'll do all right bye all right. bye our next interview is with laura martins she is the head urban tree programmer for the city of phoenix so um 
why are trees important in the city? <laughs> All right, jump right in. Um, so there are a million answers to that question. <laughs> Um, but I think that the way, so I'll tell you what's unique about the way the city of Phoenix has talked about trees, which is they had, um, the city started a new department at this, well, it's an office right now. It's not a department yet called the office of heat response and mitigation. And it's an office that taught that is created entirely to talk about heat and the way the heat works in the city and how it affects people and how it affects our built environment um, and what we can do about it. And my position, which is I'm the urban tree program manager for the city of Phoenix. And I'm, I am housed, my office, I mean, I, I am employed in the office of heat response and mitigation. And we think it's the first, well, the office of heat is the first publicly funded office in the country and any city in the country. And uh, my, and we think that my position, a position to talk about trees is the first one in the world to ever be um, kind of housed in an office of heat. So we like to talk um, about heat a lot when we talk about trees because in phoenix it's very hot and um trees and the shade that they create um can well it can help with the very small scale of sort of how hot a human is like when you're walking through the city how hot it is in the shade versus in the sun at the hottest part of the summer it's like a very big uh feeling of uh, uncomfortableness and it's a it's even so bad here in this like be, to be out in the heat of the day in the summer it's a public health issue like you can get sick and you could possibly even die um and so we we kind of talk about um heat as far as like a public health health issue and the way trees can fix can help with that uh, more shade being kind of better outcomes for people on this, like people who use the city outside. And then we talk about the other scale being uh, the urban to heat, the way trees can fight against the urban heat island effect, which is that our city is hotter than the desert around it because of all the concrete and all the. Uh, like materials that absorb the heat of the sun, as well as machines that give off heat, air conditioners, cars, yada, 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 and a variety of reasons. But trees and an increased urban forest can potentially <laughs> make the whole city cooler and can kind of fight against some of that urban heat island effect. So okay. obviously trees have like many, many other benefits, but we talk about those things in Phoenix because that's like how Phoenix is unique. Okay. Okay. And um, what inspired you to work on like this? Just trees in general. That's a really, it's a good question because I went to school for landscape architecture and I did not necessarily think I would be working in kind of what we call urban forestry. Um, I obviously really like trees, but kind of within the work I was working, um, in, I was, I was working like on, um, well, I, I, through my work as a landscape architect kind of realized how important urban forestry was and frankly, that landscape architects weren't being heard enough. And as far as that, making the urban forest better, um, landscape architects design a lot of the built environment in the city, but are sometimes left out of the process of decision making before design. And so I wasn't actually looking for a job. I had a job that I liked. But when this position came up, I applied for it. Uh, and I got it. So I took the job um, because I do think 
trees, number one, are really important in Phoenix. And the process of increasing the tree canopy in Phoenix kind of leads to a lot of other benefits, like a better green economy, better jobs, um, more birds, think better water like use. So I that's why I applied for this job and took it. Okay. Okay. And uh, Hudson, you want to ask your questions? I sent it in the... Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, what just happened? Okay. The whole, okay. <laughs> the whole thing froze. Okay, sorry. Um, let me get it here. All right. How many trees are in Phoenix, and what's the goal for the amount of trees that like we would like to plant? That's a great question. Um, and it's, uh, we have a particular, I'm never going to give you any easy answers, but the, we don't have a particular challenge in Phoenix because we're so big. I mean, Phoenix is such a, it's like a massive city, like a square footage mile, square mile city. It's really, really big. So it's really expensive and very difficult to do a tree inventory compared to like a, a smaller city, like where I'm from, I'm from Davis, California, it's 60,000 people. You can do a tree inventory in that city in a couple of months. It's very difficult to do one here. And so we are working actually with different universities and nonprofits to do what's to, okay. We don't know how many trees are in the city of Phoenix. <laughs> That's the short answer. We are working on processing some LIDAR data, which is like, it's it's uh, pictures that are taken by planes and you analyze the color in them to be able to, def you can define what a tree is by like kind of its color and its height. Like a, 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 a plane picture can pick, pick, figure that out. And um we will assess the tree canopy that way. I think there's about a 1.6 million trees in Phoenix. That's what we are thinking that there is. Our goal right now at the city is to increase the tree canopy coverage to 25% tree canopy coverage. That means like if you fly over the city like a bird and you look at everything, 25% of that is covered by trees. And we think right now it's at 12%. And so we need to double the amount of trees in the city. And how long do you think that would take to double it? Just like a rough guess. I The city has a goal of doubling it by 2030, which okay. is seven years. They made that goal 11 years ago. And we don't think that they've progressed too far on that goal. So... But they hired me. There's a lot of money going towards trees. So I'm going to say that we're going to achieve that by 2030, but I'm not. I That would be great. That's the goal. Seven years. Um, cool. Um, hey, I'm Jackson. I joined the call a little late. Hi. Um, I was wondering, how can people help plant trees? That's a great question. Because essentially, we are looking to residents of Phoenix to get involved in tree planting. We're working out some programs on how that's going to specifically happen. But you can plant a tree at your house. You can advocate for trees at your school. And you can, I think that I think talking to decision makers who are in charge of the trees in wherever you're interested in seeing more trees, that that's the best way to do it. But the best way to do it is to organize a tree planting yourself and just to just to do it yourself. It's not a, it's not something that you need someone with a whole bunch of skills to do. You need a little training to be able to plant a tree well, but it's a fairly simple process. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, sorry. So like what type of tree works here in Phoenix and how do you deal with the water issue in the desert? That is 
their second question is the million dollar question. So I'm going to start with the first one. Second one's hard. <laughs> um, the first one is um, there are certain, there are, there are different reasons to plant different species of trees in the desert. I personally always advocate first for natives. They're not always the appropriate tree to plant. And then, so we have kind of our two or three, Two bigger native trees that do well in the urban environment are the Palo Verdes and the mesquites. There are a couple of different species of those, but those are the general species. And then we have the ironwoods and the desert willows. Those are smaller trees. Ironwoods grow really, really slow. So they're not always, that's not always what people want to have a ton of time to wait for that kind of tree to grow. And the desert willows don't grow very big. And so if you're looking for a shade tree, it's not going to shade your house, um, but maybe it's a good and different application. Uh, then we have about 10 different low water um, trees, species that are not native to Phoenix. Maybe there's like some from China, some from Australia, um, that are what we call desert, like arid adapted. So they are from probably climates that are similar to ours and they do well here. Um, and the Arizona Municipal Water Association has a really good resources on their website about tree species. Cool, and um, this is back to the, how many trees are in Phoenix. How do you, like, do you use satellites to count the trees or how do you, how do you sort of get an estimate of that? Yeah. So, um, there's a couple different ways. Um, one way is just to have someone drive around and mark with a GPS. It's kind of like, a you can just take a marking with the computer and it tags it, uh, geolocates, geolocates the trees. We have a company that does that for certain parts of the city. But like I said before, to do a whole city with having someone drive around and mark the tree, it's hard to do for such a big city for Phoenix. And we want to be able to assess the tree canopy all like more often than maybe we could afford to do if we had a person drive around and do it. So the government <laughs> flies over every year and does a flyover like LIDAR. It's available to the public as an unprocessed file that you would need like a mega computer to process. They do what's it's called LIDAR, light imaging. I have to look up the acronym, but it is like a, it's a essentially a high resolution photograph taken of the whole city in little chunks. And you can analyze the light colors in that and pick out what is a tree it's not like the most accurate like you have to before maybe if you're making like a big decision based on that data you should drive out to where that place is and see if there's actually that many trees there but um it is a start and that is kind of how most cities assess most big cities assess their tree canopy. This is a very new and changing field though. Okay. Um, that's all we have for right now. Um, okay. I didn't answer your water question. So the water, I'll just give you a quick answer. Right. The water question is being figured out. Um, the, there, you know, we have, we are in a drought. We will have less Acts well. We're trying. We're trying to get to the point where we're taking less water from the Colorado River, um, and an increase in tree canopy in Phoenix may increase the water. But we do not. We have a lot of places in Phoenix where we could reduce water use outside. Um, there's sort of a lot of inefficient um, irrigation going on. You could get rid of a lot of the kind of unused turf. So there's ways in which we can reduce our water use to kind of balance out the tree canopy. And that's what at the city we're like, there's a lot of different departments working on that right now. So there's no easy answer. Okay. Um, so that's thank it. you. And um, so we're planning on doing a podcast, which I'm sure you already knew about that. Right. Um, would you want to meet up, 
sometime we can email more about this, but sometime next week on a call again to it'll be more questions, longer yes. thing. Okay. Thank we you. We love to interact with you. So of course. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Thank guys. You. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Bye. Uh, you too. Bye. 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 I hope you guys learned from this podcast and will further use this info in your daily lives. Thanks for listening to Tree Talk.